down the list and we have Nepal, Kenya, Belgium, Egypt. It's uh, lovely to have you here from all over the world. And wherever you are in the world, I wish you and your loved ones good health and happiness. The last nine months have been a very strange and challenging time for all of us. Through these challenging times, we've seen many organizations displaying flexibility, agility and resilience. We've seen the innovative stories coming from the size, coming from our partners that have amazed and heartened us. The Sci Innovations Marketplace was envisaged as an opportunity for knowledge sharing by size and partner organizations. An opportunity for us to hear about what has been tried, what works and lessons learned in innovations. Today, we are delighted to open the marketplace with the International Budget Partnership, speaking about harnessing the power of audits and looking at innovations in size, civil society, cooperation and audit follow up. We've muted the microphones to avoid background noise. So if you wish to comment or ask questions, please share in the chat. And now I will hand over to the International Budget Partnership and welcome from IDI. Thank you. Claire, are you there? Greetings, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Sorry, Jade, I was just having problems hearing you. Sorry, yes, we can hear you. I'm afraid I can't hear you, but I, if, if you can hear me, I can go ahead. Great, sorry about that. Great to see you, everyone. Welcome to the session today on SAI Innovations, uh, civil, SAI Civil Society, cooperation and audit follow-up and delighted to be here with you. My name is Claire Schouten from the International Budget Partnership and we do invite you to engage with us using the chat so please do feel free to continue to introduce yourselves, your name, your institution and your country. We see that we have more than 100 people with us from around the world so it's very exciting that you can join us and so we also just before we kick off we'd love to to hear your thoughts. So if you could use the chat uh, to just to say a little bit about why you're interested in today's session. So what interests you or excites you about SAI civil society engagement and audit follow-up? So we'd love to hear, feel free to take a few seconds just to think about that and then please use the chat to introduce yourself and to share a bit about why you're interested in this or what excites you about this topic today. Just as we have more people coming in today, we'd love to hear from you. It's great to hear from you. We have some ideas coming in. That's great. And thanks so much for the introductions. So perhaps we'll get started to then. We'll have a chance to uh, reflect today on some of the experiences and, and lessons from around the world on SAI, civil society cooperation and, and audit follow up. And we do want to encourage that live chat. We'll have a chance to hear from some speakers who I'll introduce accordingly and and then we'll get into some discussion as well so thanks so much Dave for for the introduction so if we could get this the slides up that would be great great 
So of course we're coming here today at a time where there's unprecedented uh, attention to the role of oversight actors and and quite a lot of pressure on, on SAIs to, to ensure the accountability and effectiveness of, of public funds. So it's a very timely discussion. And we believe at IBP that a robust audit and oversight ecosystem is critical for ensuring the efficiency and effectiveness of public funds and to make sure that they serve their intended objectives. So SAIs checking and reporting on the use of public funds can be instrumental in the pandemic response and recovery, as well as global agendas like the SDGs. But while accountable and essential for um, governance, we know that SAIs often face serious limitations. And, and we've seen from our recent report with the Indesai Development Initiative that many countries still suffer from uh, long-standing obstacles that can limit oversight. We know from IBP's open budget survey, which is a, an assessment of the state of public budget transparency, public participation and oversight, which we consider the key pillars of accountability. This uh, open budget survey, which we conduct with researchers around the world, it shows that audit reports, even great quality audit reports are, are withheld from the public, that hearings are not being held on those audit reports or that they happen behind closed doors. And ultimately that findings are not acted upon. So it's at the heart of this discussion today, what we can do about that. And a critical lesson for us has been um, that there are opportunities that, while critical for, uh, that SAI independence is critical for the audit and oversight ecosystem, it's that interacted action and the interconnectedness between actors, as you see here, in that accountability system that can strengthen the impact and an overall accountability of, of audits. And we see that such engagement is particularly relevant in light of the shrinking democratic spaces that we're seeing around the world and the need for checks against government excesses. So we would love to tackle today, how can SAIs and civil society engage together? So we've highlighted some opportunities here around context and stakeholder analysis, but also looking at the root causes and problems of, of some of the issues that audits are identifying. Civil society can advocate for SAIs to have the mandate and resources to operate independently. We'll hear from Ghana today on that. Audit planning, we can engage together in identifying audit topics, identifying risks, working together on indicators. Also, we have many examples of, of audit investigations. So how civil society and SDIs can, can collaborate, as in the case in the Philippines, we know we have many colleagues from the Philippines here today, and citizen participatory audits. We've also seen how social audits, in terms of engaging civil society and, and intended beneficiary communities in the audit process, how those are being adapted to the current pandemic context. So we have great examples from South Africa, for example, where social audits are being conducted in water and sanitation in informal settlements, but also in the Philippines, for example, where and Indonesia, where social audits of cash transfer programs or social assistance are being taken up by the audit institutions in their audit reports. And also critically, as we've highlighted around audit follow-up, again, where civil society can engage with SAIs both in using audits in their own advocacy, but where we're also seeing opportunities for joint follow-up. And this is an initiative that IBP is uh, conducting with various SAIs and civil society organizations. We've highlighted some examples here where they've been targeting specific issues of public concern that are identified in the audit reports, but where there hasn't been government action taken. So these are cases, for example, Chagas disease, we'll hear more about that today as well, school feeding program in Ghana, development projects in Nepal, which we'll hear more about, water and sanitation in schools in Sierra Leone, and primary education infrastructure in Tanzania. So now we'll have a chance to hear more, less from me, more from our, our colleagues here today about their experiences and their lessons of SAI and civil society collaboration and opportunities to follow up on audits. And it's great to hear from the colleagues who are continuing to introduce yourselves. Please do share your questions and comments, your experiences, links and resources in the chat. And we'll follow up on, on after the speakers speak with some facilitated discussion. 
So without further ado, I'd love to pass, let's go to Nepal with Mr. Ramaprasad Dotel, the Deputy Auditor General of the Office of the Auditor General in Nepal. And here we have some great examples of, of embedding public participation in the SAI, and, but also seeing progress on audits recommendations, including around local development projects and user committees in Nepal. So Mr. Dotel, can you tell us more about your experience of engaging with civil society and following up on, on audits of public concern. Over to you. Thank you, Claire. Are you hearing me? Claire, are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning from, uh, good, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon uh, to you all. Uh, 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 first of all, I would like to welcome you in uh, this uh, discussion uh, program and uh, uh, then uh, I would like to thank uh, IDI as well as the IBP for providing me opportunity to share the experience regarding the CS uh, engagement. Uh, many SAI are facing challenge uh, in the impl uh, regarding the implementation of the audit observation because uh, they are uh, providing audit observation to the uh, to the government, but they are not uh, implementing those uh, observation. So uh, they are facing challenge. And uh, in the few, uh, few years ago, uh, many research has been conducted, and uh, it was uh, proved that the CSO engagement of the CSO can have the good audit impact, or uh, in the implementation of the audit observation. So that's why we have also um, uh, implemented the policy of engaging uh, CSO in the uh, audit process uh, in this uh, uh, five, ten minutes. I would like to share you uh, about the experience and lesson learned as well as the next step uh, that uh, in Nepal we are uh, observing. I, uh, in the mobilization and the engaging the CSO uh, in the audit process. Uh, uh, let us talk about the uh, uh, InterSci mandate. Uh, InterSci has uh, uh, in 2011, they have passed one, uh, one uh, policy that uh, uh, to promote uh, the cooperation between SAI and uh, citizen. Uh, to enhance the public accountability. It was uh, uh, determined in 2011 July. Likewise, uh, there are several uh, standards. Uh, if we talk about the performance audit standard, there are several techniques uh, we use while conducting the um, uh, performance audit. Some techniques are focus group discussion, focal groups, uh, reference group, like that. Those techniques are related to the uh, civil society mobilization uh, as well as the citizen in engagement. Likewise, uh, 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 there is the one standard that is I IFPP uh, 12, that is value and benefit uh, to the SAI. Uh, if we look the principle six of that, uh, that uh, uh, standard, it is uh, suggest that uh, SAI should engage with the stakeholder without compromising the independence. Independence is important. Without compromising the ind uh, independence, the SAI should engage with the stakeholder. So these uh, these mandate uh, or these uh, declaration uh, uh, suggest us to use uh, into uh, to use uh, the uh, civil society. And in case of Nepal, uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have adopted the seven step uh, model that is the policy enforcement model and uh, we conceptualize uh, this uh, policy was uh, initiated from the conceptual uh, conceptualization to the development stage we have uh, 2013 we conceptualize it and we formulate the guidance uh, that is the civil society engagement uh, guideline and we uh, mainstreamed it in the our policy and plan that is the strategic plan, operational plan, and we have institutionalized the uh, post process by constituting the steering committee, working committee, like that. And we operationalize the process by, uh, by building the capacity of uh, those CSO, as well as mobilizing the CSO uh, in the 
practice, like in the performance audit, uh, maybe the dissemination purpose uh, and extract uh, uh, etc. And uh, now in the development stage, we are also um, uh, updating the C CPA guideline as well as we are mapping and providing training to the uh, CSO. And we are developing uh, some sort of mobile application too. Uh, the area may be, uh, the, as per our uh, civil society engagement guideline, there are, uh, we can engage them in the different area. Just in the planning process, while identifying the area of uh, performance audit, as well as the rich area of uh, compliance, as well as the financial audit, uh, the, um, uh, civil society people uh, are in the field. They know better about the program. They know better about the uh, mismanagement in the field. They know about the use of resources. So if we use them, uh, they can provide feedback or evidence to us. So that is the main area that we can use them. Another area, in, in case of the impact assessment and uh, of the program, as well as the civil society, uh, as well as the service delivery, we can use them in the focus group discussion, in the interview and survey also, we can use them. They can provide feedback us uh, to us, and while disseminated, uh, uh, dis uh, disseminating the AG report, uh, they, they can play a vital role in uh, providing the simplified audit report. Because uh, audit is the complicated uh, audit uh, can um, uh, audit produce complicated uh, report. They can translate it into the easy, uh, easy format so uh, that the civil society or citizen can un understand. Uh, they can also plead uh, to the uh, about the issue that uh, auditor general has pointed out to the uh, um, uh, to with the government if government uh, do not improve uh, um, or do not imp implement the uh, issue that raised by the um, uh, uh, auditor general then they can plead they can monitor they can oversight the uh, parliament as well as the uh, as well as the uh, government so these are the area where uh, we can use and we are using uh, uh, the civil society also. and uh, the main role uh, the uh, potential role uh, they can play uh, uh, the civil society can play is the informing role informing role can be played in the uh, audit process in the planning stage as well as the execution stage and disseminating advocating in the and the monitoring role can be uh, played uh, uh, at the time of uh, audit observation implementation because they can disseminate they can monitor uh, the observation and they can advocate about the observ uh, uh, observation that pointed out by the auditor general so they can play uh, four type of role uh, how we are conducting uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, engagement uh, uh, we have a, a guideline as per guideline, we uh, ha we can engage with the non-political, non-profit making organization. They should have the competency. They should uh, not have any conflict conflict of interest. The, uh, the uh, institution should be independent, and they should regard our policy of uh, secrecy. Uh, if those organizations uh, fulfill those requirements, then we can engage them. We can invite letter of intent, and we can select them and we can uh, sign agreement with them and we engage them uh, after the engagement we can uh, we can provide completion certificate to them that is the process uh, the impact uh, uh, th there are several impact uh, that uh, we are uh, getting uh, after the uh, engagement with the civil society uh, i'm highlighting two three uh, two three uh, uh, impact here uh, first impact is about the users committee involvement in the development uh, process project uh, this project uh, was uh, conducted with the ibp and uh, we uh, we conducted uh, collaboration with the uh, uh, cso and we uh, the cso uh, disseminate uh, the uh, observation that we have pointed out they probe, uh, they plead about the uh, observation and uh, now government uh, ha become uh, aware and they compel to uh, implement the suggestion and now they are circulating uh, the uh, uh, circulating our audit observation and as well as they are prepared 
guideline. That is the one impact. Another impact about the policy reform that is uh, uh, re relating to the uh, revenue. Or uh, there was a provision uh, yeah, in our government, uh, there was a provision uh, providing revenue, uh, revenue exemption to different uh, business owners. But uh, the po uh, policy objective was to uh, pass on benefit to the consumer. But uh, the Auditor General uh, observed the issue and they found that the benefit was not passed on to the, uh, to the consumer. And we raised issue and the media and civil society pick up the issue. Uh, uh, and lastly, gov government uh, implemented the suggestion and they remove all the revenue exemption. Then the government has uh, saved $60 million per year. That was the major achievement uh, that we uh, uh, achieved. Likewise, in the grant distribution also, we have, uh, uh, the, there is the policy reform. Uh, earlier, it was not uh, uh, clear policy. The grant was not uh, used in the intended pur purpose. Now, uh, they are revising the policy and implementing the result-based grant policy. So these are the major area that uh, we have collaborated, uh, engaged uh, with the civil society and the benefit uh, we are getting. And uh, there uh, should be, uh, I'm talking about the lesson learned. I uh, want to share that some preconditions should be there. While engaging the civil society, uh, if some sort of uh, precondition prevail, then the impact would be uh, better. Otherwise, uh, there, uh, the impact uh, could not be seen. The first uh, is about the institutional credibility and competency. The CSO should be credible as well as competent. If the institution is not credible, there will be no impact. So that is the most important thing. And another is the uh, network should be there. CSO should have a network. And technology should be used from the auditor side, Sai, uh, Supreme Audit Institution as well as CSO. If technology is just like the mobile application uh, like that, if we use uh, those type of uh, technique, then the impact would, uh, can be increased. Likewise, sustainability. If the fund is not available, if uh, uh, CSO is not sustainable, then the, uh, the, the impact would not be seen. And uh, there should be the access for uh, information to the civil society and citizen. Right to Information Act should be implemented. Only this, uh, this engagement would be success. Likewise, there should not be any vested interest from the civil society. If there is, a, uh, there is the vested interest, then the distortion uh, comes. And it will hamper the uh, credibility of the SAI. So that, that should be uh, considered while engaging with this uh, CSO. Another point is the willingness from the leadership. If leadership uh, of the SAI and the official are not willingness to engage with the CSO, then there will be uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, engagement will not have success. And uh, again, uh, uh, for, for the success, uh, there are the, some uh, next steps. Uh, I've already talked about the precondition, the similar point, just use of technology, mobile application. If we use mobile te technology, we are uh, going to uh, develop and financial accountability tracker that can be developed by the CSO and sustainability uh, should be there. Uh, so we are arranging some sort of fund and we want to have a long term arrangement with the CSO. And in the context of this uh, COVID, uh, we are now uh, uh, considering the web base, a virtual mode of mobilizing CSO. We want to have a virtual mode, uh, a webinar, and uh, other uh, virtual mode of mobilizing CSO. And we are thinking a network expansion of the CSO, as well as a coalition can be happen. Uh, different CSO can uh, uh, come to the coalition, and they can have the um, major impact of have uh, 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 more impact uh, to the society. Awareness and mapping and capacity building in, uh, uh, program are there. Uh, we are um, uh, developing capacity building uh, program also, and we are mapping CSO. And uh, we uh, want to avoid the conflict of interest. So while engaging the CSO, 
we signed one document, uh, is con uh, conflict of interest declaration. Uh, in that declaration, uh, we uh, the, the CSO should be independent. That type of things uh, uh, are mentioned. Uh, um, through this, uh, we want to uh, uh, remove uh, the problem or challenge that we are uh, facing. And last but not least is the uh, that the uh, the concept has been changed that auditor now the auditor are not bargaining dog they they should be bark ferociously it means to bark ferociously we should collaborate with civil society that is the message for today uh, otherwise we cannot uh, uh, impart any uh, impact to the society. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And if you have any query, uh, I'll be happy uh, to uh, answer. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. So again, we have an excellent example of how we can truly embed a civil society engagement and public participation throughout the audit process. And, and we appreciate some of the challenges you've highlighted. It's also some of the opportunities. And I think Nepal is also a great example of where they've truly engaged with different actors in the accountability system. So working with the media and how you can work with networks of investigative journalists to also uh, follow up on audit reports and, and provide solutions on uh, that are contained in audit reports as well. So thank you so much, Mr. Dotel. And we welcome colleagues to continue sharing and introducing yourselves in the chat, but also sharing your, your questions and comments and experiences. We, we'd love to come back to that soon. Um, now we'd love to turn over to Argentina. Again, a very interesting example of, of how we can embed public participation in, in the audit process. Again, also not only within institutions themselves, but in broader national strategies. And we'd love to hear from Natalia from ASIC in Argentina, how we can do that, how we can strengthen that engagement and what are some of your experiences and lessons. Over to you. Well, uh, thank you very much, Claire. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks to IDP and to IDI for the invitation to this event. Are, are you, I am trying to share my screen with you, so let me know if everything is working okay. I think so. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, summarize how uh, we are trying to improve the implementation of audit uh, recommendations from our role as a CSO. And uh, I will try to give you an idea of what our experience uh, in our organization as TIF has been uh, working uh, mainly on charas. So uh, first of all, uh, in the next uh, 10 to 12 minutes, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, accountability requires independent and effective uh, CSIs that interact with other actors, also independent and effective, in the control system, including, of course, our citizens. And also, I'd like to emphasize that uh, so social auditing does not replace fiscal control and its technical work but uh, provides it with valuable information and uh, citizens' uh, perspective. I'm sorry. Yeah. So additionally, uh, and in order to contextualize and provide you with uh, an example of a good practice that uh, took place in Argentina, uh, I would like to mention that in 2003, uh, the participation of people with disabilities in an audit on accessibility to public transport carried out by the AGN, which is our supreme audit institution in Argentina, uh, led to the detection of uh, non-compliance with the use of ramps for people with disabilities in the urban buses uh, during rush hours. 
So now uh, regard, regarding the OCP commitments uh, that of, of course are based uh, on the idea that uh, an open government has to, just has to be sorry, more accessible, more uh, responsive and more accountable to citizens. Argentina has committed to fulfill 18 goals uh, within the period uh, 2019 and 2022. Uh, in this regard, ASIG uh, agreed with the AGN on uh, promoting citizen participation in tracking uh, audit recommendations for the period 2020-2022. Uh, so uh, some of the plans in this regard are the creation of a tracking index, uh, also the implementation of a new website, and of course the design uh, of courses to CSOs on audit recommendations and how, how to use them. So uh, now, in order to deepen on the collaborative work that has been done between civil society and the national audits uh, in terms of Chagas, uh, I would like to start by emphasizing some information. Uh, as you may know, Chagas is the most important endemic disease in Argentina. Uh, between 1.5 and 2 million people live with, live with Chagas and uh, it amounts to 20% of the affected population worldwide. So uh, Argentina has a larger population living with Chagas than many other countries in Latin America and uh, Chagas uh, is transmitted by an insect uh, like dengue with the mosquito in this case, the name of that insect is uh, the vinchuca. It can also be transmitted uh, from a mother to her child. And also, but uh, maybe less usual, it may, it may be transmitted by uh, infected food or during blood transfusions. So uh, in this regard, the World Health Organization considers Chagas to be a silenced and uh, neglected disease. And uh, what that means is that the government's uh, health policy pays uh, little attention to this issue. Also, there's a lack of information and statistics. And uh, additionally, uh, I should say that the poorest sectors of the society, of the population, are usually more affected in terms of the exposure that they have to this disease. So uh, since 20, um, 2017, sorry, ASTIG uh, has worked with a series of organizations of people living with Chagas who emphasized the importance of the issue and the strategic alliance uh, helped us to look into the subject because, uh, as I said, uh, Chagas is a very silenced uh, disease. At the same time, we, uh, we saw that the AGN made a very interesting report in 2012, and then they wrote another report six, year later, six years later, sorry, in 2018. So uh, we got these reports as inputs, and uh, we noticed that there has been a significant reduction during the years uh, regarding budget allocation for Charas. So, uh, moreover, we, note, uh, we have noted that there was a deviation of allocated uh, resources in the last 10 years uh, and that there have also been uh, sub-executions sub -executions, uh, of 15% uh, of the budget allocation for Chagas. So, uh, secondly, there was a problem related to the lack of the legal framework uh, I should say first that in Argentina there is a national Chagas law, but it's not regulated. I mean that uh, in terms of exercise of rights and uh, true access for the affected population, there are some obstacles that would be better addressed if the law had been regulated. So uh, this is a big issue and on top of it uh, we have the problem of the lack of the vector control, the Vinchuca. So uh, last, I should uh, remark 
that uh, there was not enough public awareness and educational campaigns. So in this regard, I, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, tell you or to share with you that in the following month, uh, ASIG will be working uh, in a communication campaign with IVP. So thanks a lot to IVP for giving us the, the support to accomplish uh, this important project. And uh, it is also important to point out that the law, our national law for Chagas, establishes that uh, educational and communication campaigns that were not successfully fulfilled uh, in recent years uh, should be addressed in a different way uh, in the following years. So, uh, well, in terms of uh, pointing out some of the lessons learned from the auditor's office, uh, there are four main issues, four main problems that can be summarized uh, in the following ideas. First of all, uh, once the auditor presents the report, uh, there's no follow-up system in the Congress. So uh, there's no formal mechanism that allows for the implementation of the recommendations, and those recommendations are not binding in terms of the current law. So uh, secondly, uh, the office of, of the auditor is a collegiate institution, and the political parties have representation. So they have uh, they. they make decisions that uh, are consensus-based or that take uh, too much time. So additionally, we think that uh, during many years, the AGN did not uh, disseminate uh, their findings due to its, uh, its technical perspective. And uh, although you could find the reports online, uh, it didn't mean that they worked uh, to disseminate or to advertise information in an active way until recently, when they have started being uh, more active in the spread of this kind of information. And uh, in fourth place, and in the same time that I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, this is really a neglected and silent disease. So uh, we felt the obligation to incorporate ACN's reports as part of uh, our agenda. So um, regarding the strategies that we took, uh, first of all, we did some uh, budget analysis and supervision, and uh, we organized a coalition with civil society organizations, for instance, uh, people living with Chagas, uh, biologists, uh, doctors, and so on. And we made uh, formal requests to the authorities with regards uh, to these recommendations. And uh, in addition, and using AGN's findings, uh, we published uh, a series of uh, three reports um, and have also done some research in order to address uh, this topic. So, uh, moreover, we uh, requested and organized advocacy meetings with the uh, high national health authorities to demand an, uh, an improvement uh, of the implementation of Chagas public policies and to uh, boost the legal framework. So, uh, we should uh, take into account that this year, uh, the pandemic of COVID-19 left uh, almost no room for any other topic. Uh, so the same happened to the Ministry of Health. And of course, the pandemic also affected uh, our own agenda here in ASIC. So uh, finally, uh, regarding the strategies, we in engaged to develop a press campaign uh, promoting the government to do uh, public awareness campaigns and also we published a story with IVP in order to set the importance of uh, changing the perspective around the issue. Um, that, that has also a, a connection with the stigma that historically surrounded uh, the disease. For instance, in terms of the name of the disease, uh, in Spanish we used to say mal de chagas, uh, which has a bad connotation from the very beginning. 
So we try to, I mean, we try to contribute uh, our skills and also we tried to bring together uh, different stakeholders that usually did not work together to try to move forward and to accomplish some of the goals that we agreed uh, to be important. And we tried to empower AGN's recommendations. And uh, as I said, additionally, a SIG started uh, writing some reports on Chagas to complement uh, AGN's findings and to show civil society the importance of taking into account the report written by the National Auditor's Office. So uh, additionally, since 2017, we have been working on budget analysis, uh, oversight and advocacy with the Congress and also the executive to promote uh, fully executed Chagas policies. And uh, as you may see uh, in the slide, in the last five years, uh, there was an important sub-execution sub and reductions in uh, the resources. So we sent several notes uh, to the government saying that uh, our society in Argentina needed better policies to face Chagas. So uh, as you can see uh, in the chart two for next year, 2021, uh, we have the highest uh, budget allocation in the last decade. That is something, of course, uh, to be celebrated. But however, we think that it will be a major challenge for both uh, CSOs and audit uh, institutions to monitor uh, this budget allocation. So thank you very much for your time. I will stop um, sharing my screen. And well, of course, I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Natalia. I think, again, a very exciting example of how civil society and can leverage the audit and really harness the, the power of audits throughout the audit cycle. And again, Argentina is one of the few, well, the only country actually in the open budget survey where there is that opportunity for civil society and citizens to provide inputs for the audit process and the AGN provides feedback on, on how those inputs have been used or, or taken into account. So again, very interesting examples. And thank you, Natalia. I'm sure there, there are plenty of questions coming in here. So that's great. Uh, before we get to those questions, I did just want to give the, the floor to our colleague, George Said Bimpe, who's the country director of, of Send Ghana. And again, the idea here is to share some experience with some SAIs may not be aware of the role that civil society can play in advocating for independence of SAI, so ensuring that uh, SAIs have the resources and mandate to, to operate freely. So, and George is also, as, as we highlighted uh, uh, earlier, involved in the following up in the, on audit recommendations, including around the school feeding program. So, George, we'd like to, to give you the floor to, to share uh, some of your experience and lessons, and then we'll, we'll tackle these great questions that, and, and feedback that have come into the, the chat. Thanks so much. George, are you able to hear us? I think maybe he needs you maybe you need to unmute. Ah, okay. George, if you're able to hear us, please feel free to, to go ahead. Well, perhaps while we're waiting for, for George, we can get to some of these questions because again, there's been some great feedback in the chat uh, and some of the questions have been answered in the in the chat as well, but we do wanna make sure that uh, we can get, get to them. Um, but George says he can hear us. So George, are you able to, to, to speak? Okay, sorry for the technical difficulties today. Um, so let's get back to some of these questions then, and then George, we, we will come back to you. We've had some questions around sort of sustainability and, and capability and, and uh, building those networks. 
it'd be great to to pass to back to Mr. Dotel on some of these questions around how do you identify these CSOs? You touched on that, of course, in your presentation. But could you share a bit more about how you identify them? And, and then you've you've mentioned more around uh, that you're also looking to take up citizen participatory audits. So that's very exciting. So yeah, if you could elaborate a bit more on um, on how you are, are identifying those CSOs um, and and continuing to to work with them as you explore new phases, including around different technologies and and media engagement. Mr. Dotel, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Claire. Uh, uh, I show, sorry. Uh, uh, I show uh, three questions uh, in the chat board. Uh, the, uh, two questions uh, uh, are from the colleagues from SAI Indonesia. And the first question is uh, regarding about the uh capacity how how do you assess the credibility and competency of cso that is very pertinent issue uh, and is there any parameter uh, parameter uh, the credibility uh, for the credibility and the competency of the cso uh, that is a very important uh, issue while uh, engaging with the CSO, if uh, they are not competent and uh, if uh, they, they don't have any credibility, uh, that uh, will uh, have the negative impact to the SAI. So uh, first, while engaging with them, uh, we have to uh, evaluate uh, their proposal. Uh, how they are competent, uh, we can uh, 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 judge or we can evaluate their experience how long they are engaging in the uh, pfm sector or in the good governance sector uh, as well as the social mobilization sector uh, how long uh, their experience in this sector and how many manpower uh, they have uh, what is the qualification of the manpower uh, whether they are uh, they have the proper qualification whether they have the uh, proper background for uh, social mobilization whether uh, or not that is another uh, another parameter as well as uh, the uh, network i have already uh, talked about the network how uh, how much uh, they can cover uh, how much district they can cover or how uh, uh, what is the uh, network whether they are limited in the uh, uh, in the, um, uh, limited area or uh, they, they have a, a branches office that is also another parameter for competency. Likewise, uh, what is the uh, financial capacity? Whether they can sustain themselves or not, uh, we have to evaluate. If they have a sufficient fund or uh, they have a, they, they have been supported by some donor, donor agency, at that time they, they can sustain. Uh, uh, those uh, are the parameter as well as the for the credibility their pre previous reputation can be taken how much work they have carried out and uh, how much contribution they have uh, to the society uh, that can be judged and if they have a, uh, appropriate co uh, contribution to the society and uh, they have carried out previous uh, many uh, assignment relating to the uh, uh, public financial management, then we can uh, collaborate uh, with them. Those uh, are the parameters. Uh, another uh, question uh, uh, is about, uh, um, about the uh, engagement. Uh, would you consider, uh, uh, would you consider uh, to perform citizen participatory audit or SAI plus civil cooperation in one audit team in future? If yes, what field project area is most suitable for SAI Nepal to perform the uh, source audit? Uh, uh, I don't think uh, the SAI and civil uh, 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 have one team. Uh, we are not in uh, uh, like that. Uh, it is uh, only the participation, uh, the citizen, or the civil society organization uh, can participate in the audit, not as a one team. Audit team is one, and uh, audit team can collaborate or uh, 
can uh, engage or can uh, 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 can act or can uh, have the uh, collaboration with the civil society uh, not they are one team uh, they uh, civil society or uh, civil society organization can play uh, uh, informing advocating uh, and uh, monitoring as well as disseminating role but the audit role can be played by auditor audit uh, audit is performed by the auditor audit team and uh, while uh, getting information uh, getting feedback mobilizing the society disseminating the audit finding and as well as uh, uh, the advocating at the, at that time we would call, uh, we uh, can or we collaborate with the civil society that is the uh, arrangement that we have uh, done uh, with the so civil society and uh, in which uh, field uh, more or less, uh, mostly we have to uh, engage uh, civil society uh, in the field in those field in which uh, they have uh, um, they have more interest or uh, they have um, more uh, involvement just uh, take an example in the health sector they have more concern and in the development project they have more concern and in the education sector as well as the grant distribution as well as the uh, as well as uh, service delivery they may have uh, more knowledge and more evidence in those sector if we mobilize or if we engage with the civil society then uh, that would be uh, um, uh, better or that uh, would have a uh, good impact otherwise uh, they cannot uh, provide proper evidence or proper uh, information to us uh, and uh, it may not have uh, su uh, successful so uh, i think uh, i have only these uh, three uh, questions uh, uh, thank you very much uh, i have covered all my questions uh, uh, just uh, one question from uh, Sai, uh, uh, colleagues from sai pakistan uh, uh, he asks uh, they are uh, i think uh, uh, bisman khan uh, asked that uh, um, while planning a cpa do you first carry out uh, a pilot project performance audit and then replicate it to the wider area for the implementation? Uh, I, I think uh, in the initial stage, we conducted a pilot audit in one, uh, one area, only one project. Now we are gradually increasing the number of uh, pilot audit. Now uh, we are increasing. Uh, number of uh, pilot audit uh, pil uh, engagement uh, now uh, different area we are uh, involving them so uh, initially uh, we have a, a few number now gradually we are uh, increasing the number of involvement uh, that is uh, uh, the answer of uh, the question uh, thank you very much uh, clear I, I have covered Thank you very much. Great. No, thank you very much, Mr. Dotal. And again, we're seeing interesting examples in Nepal of, of reaching out to a variety of civic actors and, and broadening the engagement with yeah, different actors and associations and networks of journalists and unions, of course, as well. Uh, I want to turn over to Natalia as well in terms of broadening the coalitions and, and uh, in civil society. We are also um, just to reflect a bit more on, on some of the other contexts in which we're working. We've seen examples of uh, coalitions of civil society, for example, in Tanzania, across a different range of, of sectors that are coming together to address audit findings. Uh, similarly, in, in, in Ghana, um, George hopefully can, can share some experiences, but very interesting experiences of, of bringing audit findings to, to grassroots uh, movements and organizations and how you can build audit findings into citizen manifestos, for example, and then hold political parties to account in their manifestos and, and obviously as they uh, continue to engage in government. So Natalia, maybe you could share a bit more about how you and, and the SAI have been able to engage more broadly with other actors. What are some recommendations again for, for others who are, are looking to bring in perhaps unusual suspects into 
into their audit accountability work. Over to Natalia. Well, thanks a lot, Claire. And uh, yes, I, I would like to add uh, in this regard that I think that one one thing that was crucial for our work uh, with Chagas was to uh, build uh, a strong coalition with uh, different stakeholders that, uh, as I said, were not used uh, to working together before. For instance, uh, we managed, we, we were able to, to be in touch and, and to uh, do some research with uh, people from um, different sectors like uh, doctors, uh, physicians, biologists, uh, scientists, and also, uh, and this is maybe one of the most important parts or, or, of uh, our success working uh, on um, ACN's recommendations, we, engage, uh, we engaged with people living with Chagas, and this is maybe, uh, might be one of the, the most important things to take into account uh, when, the, we, when we start, when you address a topic like Chagas in Argentina, which is uh, the most important uh, endemic disease we have in Argentina, and it's really a silenced uh, disease. I mean, you, when you go to school, you may be able uh, to learn about Chagas maybe once uh, during primary school, uh, if you're lucky, and that's the, 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 the truth. So maybe you are not uh, in touch with the topic uh, if you don't uh, know uh, personally uh, somebody who, who, who has uh, had the, the disease or, or the parasite that uh, is associated with the disease. So I think uh, it is really important to work on uh, disseminating and, and the spread of the information, which is really valuable for everybody here. So also it's important to build uh, and to uh, strengthen the network between uh, civil society and organizations that uh, maybe uh, if you think about other kind of subjects, you see uh, biologists uh, working uh, alone and then uh, civil society uh, doing some advocacy alone. So I think it's uh, crucial, it's really important to work together and to share previous knowledge and to think or design the strategies all together. So uh, that would be maybe the, the, the most important thing to say or, or that I like to share with you. And uh, that really worked uh, a lot for us in 2017. And we think that uh, we can further this approach and we can work together uh, and uh, develop, develop sorry, uh, a communication campaign for next year that uh, I think is one of the most important tools we have, the communication campaigns and the, the public awareness uh, work. So, well, thank you very much. And of course, uh, if you want to ask or, or, or if you want to have more information uh, about the work we are doing in ASIC, I can send you everything through Claire and to, through IVP. So, of course, at your disposal. Thank you very, very much. Great, no, gracias. And so now we're, I do want to turn back to Dugana, and, uh, and I know there are more questions coming in around some of the difficulties. So I will come back to the speakers about sharing some of that. But uh, George from, from San Ghana, if you could share a bit more about your experience of, of advocate, advocating for SAI independence and some of the work that you're doing, the complementary efforts of outreach and analysis uh, that you're doing to, to collaborate with the audit service in, in Ghana. Over to you, George. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Claire, and then apologies. I was, this is my first time, so I was struggling and uh, my system was blocking some of the audio features. Um, unfortunately, I can't turn on the, I tried to turn on the video, but it wouldn't turn on. So, uh, pardon me if you cannot see my face. I think it is something from the other end. Um, I will go straight to the point um, about um, how we are, we have, our partnership with the audit service has also led us into working to pro uh, protect their independence. And that um, we realized that um, in the last couple of years, there were some uh, government attempt to undermine the, uh, the office of the auditor general, the independence of the institution. And so, um, <clears throat> 
it's culminated um, into, uh, I think some of you may have followed it, um, the government asking uh, the Auditor General to proceed on, uh, on leave, uh, basically sanctioning him for not uh, taking his leave days. But we believe that that is just the, uh, an approach to get him out of the way for them to do whatever that they are doing. And we think that it's a major, um, it's a major problem because it basically uh, undermines the independence of that office and that we would, uh, we started by undertaking a nationwide campaign to, for government to reconsider that decision to interfere with how the Auditor General conducts his affairs. Um, we collected uh, signatures, but of course, all of these, and um, we used media campaign, all of these didn't work um, in terms of getting the government to respond, uh, to rescind a, a decision in what we considered to be an interference with the work of the, uh, the service. And so um, we are currently before the Supreme Court of the land. Um, and in doing that, um, we have done it as a, um, as, as, as a group of CSOs that are in, in, interested in protecting the independence of constitutional uh, bodies. And so um, we have seen um, many civil society groups that have come together and we, um, we have filed our case before the Supreme Court, seeking declaration that the president doesn't have the power to ask the Auditor General to go on leave. The president doesn't have the power to appoint somebody to act as a, an audit, a, 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 what do you call it, a, a Auditor um, General. We, we, we seek that declaration. We are also seeking declaration uh, in terms of the administrative power that the president has. Um, uh, or doesn't have to, um, that would uh, more or less emphasize the independence of that office. So we are before court and we are hoping that the matter will be called and adjudicated, but we are very sure and clear in our minds that we have a good case um, to protect the, the uh, office of the special, I mean, of the auditor uh, general. Having done, having done that, um, the, there are some other things that we have done that would uh, that basically have gone to empower the audit service. Um, the fact that we had a very good um, relationship with the current um, auditor general, and the fact that we have taken up um, issues that ordinarily you can't find civil society uh, handle or even the, the, the government appointees handle in terms of working to promote their independence. And on a number of occasions, not only this one, on a number of occasions, we have um, organized ourselves to support them uh, so that um, government becomes aware of how much support they have from the public or from the citizens. So in dealing with them, uh, government um, is a bit now careful because they know that that institution has support from the citizens and that if you do anything to start them, you may have to deal with not just that institution, but with citizens. And that, for me, empowers the, the, the service to assert this itself or to be independent and act um, um, the way that um, the constitution allows it. Um, we have also provide a partnership with them, uh, with them, and those have resulted in providing platforms for the service to be more open and accountable to the citizens. Either do, either do you wouldn't find the service engaging uh, the citizens directly, but that kind of platform empowers the citizen, uh, the, 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 the service to engage, uh, 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 for which reason many people are now interested in how government is handled or inter, in, uh, is handled that office or is interfering with the work of that um, office. We, we, the current project that we are implementing is basically about 
and the uptake of audit report uh, and recommendations. And um, by through this partnership, I think it is a, it's, it's empowering the service to engage auditees or entities on how they would be implementing those recommendations that keep coming coming up. And I think um, it's, it, this is very innovative in terms of the set, providing the opportunity for the service to go behind the report and engage the uh, duty bearers or the auditees to ensure that those recommendations and the kind of reforms that need to uh, happen are happening. And I think um, this is something that I wanted to share. Already, I was struggling before I could join, and so I would I would want to leave it here, and then I will I tackle questions if there are some for me. Thank you. Great, thanks, George. And we'll also share more links in the the chat. And I know there's a lot of interest in in how. Uh, civil society can play a role. We know, for example, in Sierra Leone, where there was there were challenges in, in the government undertaking or the SAI undertaking COVID related audits and, and the uh, the audit service has has welcomed the uh, the active engagement of, of civil society to push the government to enable this this audit. In other contexts in Jamaica, for example, we've seen that the government has has welcomed real time audits. Uh, but again, civil society has a role to play in following up on those audits, participating to the extent that they can in, in, in using those audit findings as well. So great examples there. I think Ghana is also an interesting example, as I highlighted earlier, of, of complementing uh, the formal reports of the SAIs by um, helping with, with complementary analysis, in this case, looking into uh, procurement around, uh, around the catering services, for example. So of course, procurement is a, a critical issue in, uh, that comes up in, in many countries as well. We've seen some great comments here around opportunities to engage further in, in stakeholder discussions in Argentina, for example. Great to hear that. Um, we've also seen some great examples and, and frameworks from a variety of countries, for example, in Kenya, where the SAI and had broad consultations to develop a citizen engagement framework. So that's very, uh, very interesting. We'd love to hear from other countries if if they're developing such frameworks, uh, we welcome these opportunities and, and are documenting and, and sharing those lessons further. So we, I wanted to come back quickly to our, our speakers around some of the, the difficulties. Are there any, other than what you've highlighted already, are there any other particular difficulties? Again, we highlighted some of these questions around sort of democratic spaces and, and, and challenges for accountability in general in, in many contexts, um, you know, the resources to operate, the independence to operate. Um, if, I'll just give you each a, a couple of minutes to highlight any other challenges that you want to talk about. But also, since we want to come away with these, this session from, with some practical advice, what are some of your other additional tips for, for addressing some of those challenges? So perhaps I can pass over to Mr. Dotel just to highlight any other challenges and, and opportunities you see to overcome those challenges. Uh, just uh, thank you, Claire. Uh, I have uh, already uh, highlighted some challenges. However, uh, the most uh, important uh, challenges uh, that we are facing uh, is that uh, uh, to find the appropriate uh, appropriate uh, CSO because uh, we need uh, CSO. Uh, which are involved in the public financial management and uh, much more experience and uh, th th that have more competency. Uh, but uh, while uh, inviting the proposal, uh, very few uh, uh, the CSO uh, are interested uh, to participate uh, uh, in uh, our program. So uh, it is uh, in such a case uh, we are facing uh, difficulty uh, to find uh, the appropriate uh, CSO. And another uh, one is about the fund, uh, because uh, uh, being a government organization, we cannot uh, provide fund uh, to the uh, civil society organization. Uh, in such case, uh, without having any fund, uh, they they may not have uh, interest to participate in the program. So, uh, if any 
uh, development partner provide phone to them uh, at that time uh, they uh, they can uh, participate or they can voluntarily uh, engage with us otherwise uh, in such case uh, the sustainability problem uh, may arise so uh, so uh, that is the another main challenge uh, and uh, another uh, important challenge is the uh, vested interest i have already highlighted that uh, in some cases uh, when we uh, uh, went to the field at that time uh, they may have some interest and they want to provoke uh, that uh, that interest and they want to include uh, those uh, those thing in our report at that time uh, maybe uh, uh, auditor general's uh, credibility uh, may be uh, loosen so uh, we have to be cautious uh, that uh, uh, while uh using them whether they have uh, any vested interest or not and whether they are in, uh, independent or not so uh, we are we are uh, uh, we are um, signing a code of uh, uh, code of ethics declaration with them and uh, there is the secrecy uh, secrecy provision also there but still uh, some uh, difficulty we are facing uh, even uh, there are uh, many challenges but still we have to minimize those uh, challenges and we have to uh, uh, we have to move uh, forward and uh, we can uh, have uh, uh, more capacity building uh, program to aware them and uh, to to have to develop their capacity in the uh, public financial management sector and if uh, uh we approach to any uh, type of uh, donor or any type of um, um, uh, institution that provide fund to the social mobilizer at that time the sustainability can uh, be uh, promoted so uh, uh, we can have a more effective collaboration uh, with them uh that um, uh, we should not leave uh, the many challenge but we have to cope with those challenge and move forward uh, that is uh, our uh, policy thank you very much excellent now we're excited to continue that engagement to overcome those challenges together uh natalia over to you on some of the final sort of thoughts or uh, around some of the challenges and, and opportunities to overcome those challenges Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Claire. Well, I mentioned uh, some of the, the main challenges that we face working with this, but uh, in order to add uh, another perspective or another thing to be taken into account, I think it's important to work on the time frame of the AGN uh, here in Argentina reports. Uh, because uh, we need to take into account that uh, the AGN reports are uh, released uh, a year after the analysis, the analysis is written. So uh, sometimes the political agenda changes or varies. So uh, I think it's important to uh, work on that matter. And uh, in order to think about opportunities, um, I think that the current situation uh, with the pandemic uh, due to COVID-19, uh, it's also a good opportunity to uh, disseminate uh, technical information in a more accessible way and uh, to involve uh, more or different uh, social sectors and uh, to take uh, action together and to think or design a new strategies together, I mean, uh, working together the, the CSOs with the uh, uh, Supreme Audit institutions uh, all over the world. So I think uh, that uh, webinars like this are a great opportunity, especially during uh, a year so difficult uh, as it was uh, the current year. So uh, I really uh, appreciate the opportunity and the time. And of course, again, uh, I'm able to, to, to keep in touch and thanks again to IDP and to IBA and to all the audience we have today. So thanks. 
Great. Thanks so much, Natalia. And, and George, maybe we can pass over to you for some more uh, reflections on sort of the, any sort of key difficulties that you've been encountering. And uh, you've mentioned quite a few of it and how, how together we can overcome them. Um, and and then if there are any more questions in the chat or any more, we welcome more comments or questions or experiences in the chat. And then we'll, we'll be coming to a close soon. Thank you. Over to you, George. OK. Um, the, actually, I didn't reflect on some of the uh, lessons uh, and the challenges directly. But I think um, when you engage in uh, audit accountability issues and you have a government that um, seeks to um, more fundamentally disagree with the nature, the scope, um, and the nature and the scope of work of uh, a, a supreme audit institution. Um, it, it is important that you know civil society steps steps in to if you like support the defenseless in this case the uh, poor um, you know technocrats at the audit service so for me that is very important and um, the other lesson is how we use the media to more or less diffuse the spread of wrong information or if you like propaganda um, that undermines the even the morale and then the work of such um, uh, such, prof such professionals that's one lesson the other lesson is that um, in working with supreme audit institution we must show um, clearly the value that we we add the value addition uh, the the value addition and if we are able to demonstrate value addition um it is the beginning of building trust uh you know trust among um ourselves because one of the challenges has been that you never know the intention of a civil society organization and so it is difficult to partner with um civil society organization from the from the point of view of the service so we, um, but by building trust by building trust and laying bare the intention or the, the the brain behind the effort that we make we are able to then address that that problem or that lack of trust and we we, we are able to make um progress the the other point is that um what, what, what I have learned is that the audit service or the supreme audit institution, um, uh, supreme audit uh, institutions are always, um, I think, are, are ready to work with civil society. But we must um, understand that si since they are bureaucratic and they are government institution, it takes a lot of time for them to adjust and what i have learned is that that discussion oftentimes doesn't permit all um, all the rank and file of the institution so we need to um, make sure that whenever there is a partnership between us civil society and uh, supreme audit institution that partnership becomes institutionalized so that it doesn't stay with just few people and when those people are not there it affects how uh, we implement project, and we are seeing that in our partnership with the service. We 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 netted the partnership around few uh, people. So we will need to. The lesson is that how do we institutionalize it so that it becomes something that everybody in the institution, so far as they are interaction with the civil citizens are concerned, is aware of such existing partnership, so that we can build. Uh, on it from there. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks so much. And we have um, a question here about civil society. And again, we've been uh, addressing some of these questions and uh, IBP partners with civil society organizations around the world. And, and you have formal 
sort of CSOs or NGOs, of course, but you have other civic actors, social movements, grassroots organizations, uh, trade unions. Um, in Argentina, we know that working with professional associates and lawyers and doctors and other um, professions who can, can also advocate for this cause. Of course, the role of, of the media is critical. George highlighted some of the challenges of, of uh, effective uh, reporting and, and ensuring that we can identify through our strong sort of context and stakeholder mapping some of the right actors to engage, but also bring in the affected communities. And, and often we, uh, there's a challenge there of making the connection between some of our high level or, or perhaps technically sounding work uh, like audit reports can be and ensuring that there's a connection with people who are affected by the very issues that that the audits are, are tackling. So it's it's great to hear some of these examples of, of really connecting with with different actors who are affected and, and have a stake in, in the, the issues that audits are are tackling. Um, I just wanted to see if there are any more any more questions or, or comments. Again, I'd left some resources in the chat. We we do welcome you to to share your questions. Uh, on our side we we've been collaborating with various intersci bodies, various SAIs. It's been fantastic to engage with regional bodies as well on exactly this topic. So how do we strengthen SAI civil society cooperation? There's a, a framework that's being developed to, to further support SAIs offering guidance uh, on this matter. We're very excited about some of the next steps there. I also wanted to take this opportunity again to share on our side, in addition to, to thanking our, our speakers, which I, I will certainly do, and, and to IDI, of course, as well, for organizing this session, uh, that we will also be continuing our, our open budget survey. And this is very much a, a tool for dialogue and an opportunity to, to guide reforms. And we'll be doing a specific COVID assessment. So looking at the transparency and accountability aspects of COVID-related spending, those results will come out in April 2021. So again, we would love to engage with, with SAIs on, on those topics. We're continuing to document the lessons that we're learning from, from different countries, so please do get in touch. We also will be continuing uh, this conversation uh, between finance ministries and uh, the IMF, the head of the IMF, and the IBP, and the USGAO, so also Vice Chair of Indecide Donor Cooperation on December 16th at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I just put the link in the chat. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, we see some comments here from South Africa in terms of how they define CSO. So we would definitely love to keep this, this conversation going. So I think some of the clear lessons that have emerged today is that there are opportunities to strengthen that engagement throughout the audit process. So from first identifying the topics to address and the planning process, how we can collaborate through the audit investigations, that critical aspect of follow-up where we're, we're still not seeing enough of the executive response, but also challenges around ensuring that the legislature takes up the audits as well. And ultimately ensuring that we have those, those audits published and that SAIs have the capacity and, and the resources and mandate to operate independently. So we all have a role to play in, in terms of analyzing those problems, in terms of tackling those problems, and, and sharing our, our lessons and experiences together. So I want to thank Mr. Mr. Dotel and, and Natalia, of course, and, and George, and all of everyone here who's been participating actively and, and sharing your experiences. Please, let's keep the conversation going. And we look forward to staying in touch. But Jade, over to you. Thanks so much again for, thank you. for organizing this. I think it's been a very rewarding um, experience. So thank you to our speakers. Thank you to Nepal. Thank you to um, Argentina. Thank you to uh, Kenya. I think um, for me, it's really become obvious from these conversations that we have this issue of balance. It actually reminds me of watching my son learn to ride his bike. And when he was first learning, he would steer radically to the left and then all the way to the right and swerve along. But um, as you become more experienced, you find this balance in the middle. And when we think about the size engaging with civil society, we have this balance that we need to strike, as has been clear in the chat and in the conversations that we've had around our independence and keeping up our professional judgment. But at the same time, the amount of wealth of information that lives with the CSOs, that lives with um, the relationship they have with the citizens, and how we can really um, build that into our audit processes whilst maintaining that professional judgment. 
I think um, the advice I was given when I was starting out in audit was to uh, listen attentively and read critically. So the idea was that you bring all of this information in, but then you are quite critical in terms of what you choose to take forward. <clears throat> um, so I find this idea of balance really important and interesting. And it's so nice to hear these real experiences. In terms of taking our conversation forward with IDI and Sci Innovations, we have our next marketplace event on Monday, the 14th of December um, at 3 p.m. So that's uh, Monday coming. And if you are not already registered for that and you would like to register for that, then you may register um, by 2 p.m. tomorrow, Oslo time. And so this um, event will be on rethinking the way that we do audit. And it's from Costa Rica about their experience in agile audit. So we found with the COVID pandemic that SIS have had to look at very quick ways to deliver value and to be able to give very uh, timely inputs into um, decision making. And so they've been looking at ways to do that and we'll be discussing those. As we said, the marketplace is an opportunity for SIS who want to share information, who want to share about innovations that they have done. This can either be through a webinar or we can have written reports that we'll lodge in our library. So if you have something that you would like to share with us, that you would like to share with the community, then please do get in touch and we'll be glad to take that forward. And thank you again to our fantastic speakers today. I've really enjoyed that. <laughs>